FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Well, we've got all sorts of things going on. We got our good friend Joe Messina with us. You find Joe at therealside.com. And Joe, I know you've uh, been having a busy week here, a busy two weeks. Uh, I've got uh, convention itis myself. Uh, I don't think I'll be watching another convention again for at least four years. So, Joe, you must be totally fed up and sick of all political conventions, right? <laughs> well, no, actually, I got to tell you something. The RNC uh, convention, I was sitting there thinking to myself, oh, yeah, here we go again. I got to go watch the stuff. They're going to tell me how great they are and all this other stuff. But the reality is when you start looking and listening, this is a very, uh, pardon the term, but this is a very Reagan-esque convention. And when I say that, I don't mean, you know, I feel like I'm back in the Ronald Reagan days, but Trump and team are making you proud again to be American. They're making you proud uh, of your American heritage, if you would. And, and it's not all negative on how this country is and what it's like, is it? Yeah, it's, it's only negative if you're in a city where they're busy burning everything down, looting and shooting and you know, Trump said it best, uh, first the looting and then the shooting. Well, you know, I don't know. Where are you getting your information? Because CNN and MSNBC and ABC, DEFG said they're peaceful. Who's Most, looting and shooting? What are you, you watching? Mostly peaceful. Mostly <laughs> peaceful. Mostly peaceful, Joe. I don't know what mostly peaceful is. Is that like a, a slightly pregnant or almost pregnant? Yeah, I don't know. Right. Yeah. No, you know, it's, it's really funny. It, 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 when you watch what's going on TV... Think of, think of the derangement syndrome or the derangement you have to have. As a reporter for CNN or MSNBC, you're standing in front of a burning building, seven burning cars, people running around looting stores, and you are actually reporting as a mostful peace, mostly peaceful protest. I mean, do they, do they really believe, they must believe, that, that people are that stupid, that ignorant, or believe everything that comes out of their mouth? I, I'm, really, I'm really perplexed. This is so beyond... Any kind of common sense level measure meter, uh, my brain can't wrap itself around it. Well, common sense uh, has never been a uh, um, <laughs> a very uh, strong trait of uh, of the left, has it? Yeah, no, seriously, it, it it never has been, and and it is. You can tell the difference between the two um, the uh, two conventions, right? You look at the DNC convention, man, they're calling Trump dark. And what were they? They were nothing but dark for four days. It was all about how bad this country was, where it's at, how bad it treats black people. I mean, the numbers don't show it. Nothing, I got to say, and, and I know painting with a broad brush, people wouldn't say what I'm saying, but really nothing they said was a was a statement of fact uh, at the DNC. Nothing. When you talk about the the levels of uh, you know levels of violence against blacks, levels of violence in these cities, it just wasn't true. And and the beauty is, I don't know if you saw. Uh, the other night that they, they, they was it CNN no MSNBC or CNN one of the two they interrupted uh, or Rachel Maddow interrupted her regularly um, scheduled spewing of garbage uh, to get a hold of a couple of governors in the cities where they where the uh, violence was taking place and I, well, one of them was what, what Whitmore right oh, and uh, yes to say that so the, the, the Republicans are saying that you know that it, uh, only Democrat cities are running into this and it's out of control and it's violent. And she denied it all. How could that be? You're there. You had to call the police, your own state police to your mansion or house or whatever to protect you from the violent thugs. But people are buying it. People believe it. They do. But you know, they're burning down Kenosha and uh, you know, I don't know if you ever been to Kenosha or not. I've actually been there before. It's not a bad uh, town. Uh, you know, that's where you got uh, Oshkosh Bagosh. Uh, you get those kids uh, clothing, you know, overalls yep. and jeans and stuff. And it was like it was an OK place. And uh, now they've turned it into something that I can't even believe. I can't even believe it, Joe. I really can't. The burning down is, you know, it, it, it is exactly what I've been saying. I'm sure you've been saying the same thing. This cannot be, first of all, let's just be honest about it, whether you agree with them or not. This cannot be BLM proper. This can't be the original BLM group because it's mostly white punks 
that are going into these neighborhoods. And what are they doing? They're burning down black businesses. They're burning down, tearing down, you know, uh, um, people who own black, you know, black people who own cars and such. How is this furthering that message? It can't be. And I'll tell you what, we're right because now you're starting to see today and, and, and with a few others, you're starting to see CNN crack a little bit, right? When you think about it, you start to see these, uh, you know, Don Lamont, yeah. uh, now he's coming out. Look, this violence is in helping. You got to stop the violence. But it was fine up until yesterday. Not well, a word, there, right? There wasn't any up until yesterday, right? I forgot. I'm sorry. I apologize. I lost my, my time mind, if you would. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I've never seen anything like what, uh, what these, uh, these so-called journalists are reporting, and it's so detached from reality. And now it's like, oh, yeah, there's, uh, there's gambling going on, right? Oh, yeah. This, these guys, again, there was, um, I saw a little clip the other night. Uh, it, I think it was Seattle or Portland where they actually use quick drying cement on the outside of a door at the police station. I don't know if you saw that. Mm-hmm. And they had all the door closed. And, and they put it in the seals and in the lock. And then what they did was they threw Molotov cocktails through the windows. Now, that should be attempted murder. Those people should be, you know, picked up, found up, and, and they should be brought up on attempted murder charges. This isn't this is no longer a protest, period. Right. This is this is people trying to take over uh that city, that town, that whatever, and they need to be they need to be held responsible for it. Hey, what about shooting them when they're trying to do this kind of thing? What's wrong with that? I don't see- I don't see why they don't. I'm with you. I actually, I kind of joked one night. I said, uh, just bring out the old fashioned water cannons. Not, nothing slows these people down faster than water cannons on the back of fire trucks. You know, oh, they can't do that. It's mean. It's whatever. And then not, not more than two hours later, somebody sent me a video of them using water cannons. I think it was in Germany or someplace like that. And they, they, they squelched that uh, riot in a matter of minutes, really. Yeah, that's what, great. Yeah, Europe was known for using water cannons. I mean, when these people are violent and they're trying to kill the cops and they're blinding them with uh, with laser pointers and things like this, it's time to time to take off all uh, restraint and unshackle yep. the police and end this thing already. And who in their right mind wants to be a cop? When uh, everyone's trying to kill you. Well, you know, let me tell you how bad it is, really, when it comes to the police uh, departments. The National Association of Police, uh, who, do, who do they endorse? Let me see. Uh, Donald Trump. Oh, a Republican what a shock. Con- yeah. <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're going, and, and the Dems are losing their minds over it. Wait, wait a minute. You want to defund these guys. You talk negative about them on a regular basis. And, and I'm sorry, we're kind of confused here. And you want to know why they don't support you? That's their mindset. Yes. Yes, totally. Totally. And uh, how much longer is it going to go on for? That's what I want to know. Till even, uh, you know, you look at the uh, mayor of Portland, the mayor of Seattle, and all of a sudden they're, you know, they're concerned about it. Come on. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. No, I, 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 I think they're getting the word probably from further up and they're going, you know, you got to knock it off. You're killing us. Right. You, yeah. you, you can't keep the ceiling on. And I'm, and I'm sure that's the word they're getting. Oh yeah. Seriously. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, it, again, I go back to the same thing. I think that we should let them go, let them burn down their cities, let them, you know, let them uh, ransack their police, let, let them do what they're doing to show you the difference between Democrats and Republican run cities. I mean, seriously, when they come in, they need to be squelched almost immediately. I could not agree with you more. And I just wonder when, how much longer it's going to go on for. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter what the police do, if they if it's a justified shooting, whatever. Uh, it, it makes absolutely no difference. They're just going and they're going to do whatever they want to do. And nobody's going to try to stop them. Look what happened to New York City. And look at the aftermath. People are leaving oh. the place. It'll be, will the last person who leaves please turn out the lights? <laughs> yeah, you know, think about the, the rash of these riots that have taken place, you know, you, I mean, the last four or five major ones when it comes to um, what Trayvon Martin, you go all the way back to then, you know, and coming forward and some of these say, and, and, and the tapes that you see afterward or the video that you see when you get the full video, all of a sudden you realize that, well, wait a minute, we were lied to. Yeah. They didn't tell us. You the think? Truth. <laughs> uh, you think, you think we were lied to <laughs> Joe? 
but it doesn't stop them. No. Look, at, look at the the, the looters. I'm sorry, yeah, the protesters. Uh, I think uh, five or six weeks ago, when they were walking around with hands up, don't shoot. That was debunked. Oh, I it can't was breathe. I can't breathe. Black, yeah, debunked by a black AG. Two of them, as a matter of fact. And uh, you, you sit there and you just scratch your head and go, "All right, so you bought the lie, you've swallowed the lie, and the lie must continue." That's how they feel. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's the big lie, and I guess if you tell it long enough and enough times, they're going to uh, believe it. But anybody really believing it now, uh, you got to be a real Kool-Aid drinker to believe what they're saying, don't you? I was going to say qualify that comment. When you say anybody believe it now, yeah, Dem, there's plenty of rank-and-file Dems that are believing it hands down. Uh, not even questioning it, not even questioning the reality of the whole thing. You know, are you telling me? And 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 it was great because uh, what is it, um, uh, Oshkosh police or whatever whatever it is, uh, the, the police chief came out and he said, look, the first night of of the protest slash riot, there were there were there was lines of cars coming in from out of the county. There were people that didn't even live here, that didn't belong here. They're the ones that did the damage. He said last time we had two hundred people. They were or there were there were almost all townspeople, and it was a peaceful protest. And we protected them and we allowed it to go on because they, they weren't smashing, killing, looting, or burning anything. So, again, I say to people, pay attention to what's happening. Just yeah. nuts. Yeah, it's, it's the def- very definition of insanity. Speaking of insanity, uh, what's, uh, what's going on in the uh, insane state of California? Oh, really? You know what? You're going to make me throw up my breakfast. Um, so the the uh, Newsom, uh, this guy's just a peach. Three hundred and seventy fires are going in in the state right now. We well over a million acres have burned, and you know whose fault it is? It's Trump's fault. Of course, uh, he was uh, he was lighting he was lighting matches. He had gasoline and Molotov cocktails, didn't he? Yeah, oh, them lighting gas. Yeah. So part of that is is they say because you know he won't give them the money that they need to fight climate change. Well, it's not climate change, you moron. Even even the eco freaks are now saying, you know, you've got to clean up the forest. You've got to allow them to clean up that under. Uh, what is it? The 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 stuff that has fallen to the ground. And I said, you know, if you think about this, a hundred years ago or whatever, we let Mother Nature take its course. It did what it had to do, right? And and yeah, it was lit up. Right, exactly, exactly. And and again, these guys. So what was it? Climate change then too, or was it Mother Nature doing what it was what it was meant to do? So you got him doing that. Now he's talking about an exit tax. Check that out. Yeah, for uh, 10 be, years. Is it 10 years? 10 and then the original years. conversation. So now it's like it's like that song from Hotel California. You can check in, but you can never check out, right? You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. So, so you, you, you know, you got to tell people. People have to understand if the Democrats get total control of this country, just look at California. We have the highest taxes in the country on, on gas and stuff like that. Now they're talking about a mileage tax because they figured out that more people, you know, they push the electric cars, right? Now yeah. more people have bought electric cars, but guess what they're not getting at the gas pump? Look at an electric car. You don't need to go. They're not getting taxes. The gas no taxes now they for you. Pilot. No, but there's no rider for gasoline cars. Right. Right. So I'm at the pump and I'm paying as I'm driving along. I mean, these guys are nuts. Increase in income tax, going to bring it 16 or 17%. These guys are just taxing the crap out of everything while telling you what you can buy and can't buy at the stores and, and that kind of stuff. So I, I just, this is just amazing to me. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be amazed because, because uh, this is the logical conclusion, the logical result of unbridled uh, progressivism. I don't want to call it liberalism. It's not liberalism. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 
No, and and you know the, the legislature here in California did it. They screwed themselves. They gave him un, uh, you know untethered power, and now they're trying to pull it back. And the Democrat legislature won't allow them. They won't even bring the bills to the floor. Republicans have introduced almost 31 bills uh, to curb his uh, his authority, his spending at his just authority period. I mean, he's out of control up there. Uh, put out a contract, paid for a contract to provide uh, five million masks a month so that we can help with our, our make sure our kids have masks. You know, here you love this. So from an education standpoint, what he wants, you ready for this? <laughs> he wants every school has to have like, you know, like these buckets of hand sanitizer. The kids are supposed to uh, use it before they go to classroom, use it when they come out. Then he wants us to use these wipes. And he wants the wipes to be used to clean the desk. So every kid who leaves the, the uh, room, the classroom, has to wipe the desk down with one of these wipes. And, uh, and, uh, and then every kid has to have a mask on, and we have, to, we have to maintain six feet. So I want you to, let's just have some fun with this, all right? We're talking high school kids here. You know how you and I were in high school. So <laughs> I'm sure oh my God. we're going to wipe it, right? And are they going to provide uh, these, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, science grade level trash cans? Because if you're wiping you, those uh, the virus germs on those wipes, you're going to throw them into a regular garbage can? <laughs> you, you see where I'm going? This? I mean, yeah, think you this need way. hazmat. It's, it's like, are you guys, are you guys really, are you really saying this? Yeah, they're saying it, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Of course, man. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> no, I, 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 there's the other. I mean, he's like the crazy old hippie, uh, you know, uncle or grandfather that's sitting in the living room. Mama goes, hey, don't be alone with him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, well. don't hang go alone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness gracious. What has it? What have we wrought here? What has this all come down to? Right. Jerry, yeah, you heard, I'm sure you heard the other day where, where um, uh, Mrs. Clinton told Joe not to concede no matter what yeah. on election night. No, so she's I'm saying expert. to myself, oh yeah, well, not only that, they need to know how many votes they need to scam to be able to put Joe over the top. That's why they, they she told him not to concede. That's number one. And then uh, number two is if you think about this, now you got Nancy Pelosi who's come out and she says, uh, tells Joe, no, no, don't, don't you dare debate him because it be it, ready for this one. It belittles the bait process, the debate yeah. process. Mm -hmm. You go, no, no, because you know, he's going to look like a buffoon. That's why you don't want him to do that. You know, he, you can, you know, that he's going to get, uh, just beaten up by Trump. It's just amazing to me. And they keep going down these roads. Yeah. It's, uh, I still think they're going to do a switcheroo on the guy. They can't allow him to run. I mean, he, they're not even chartering him an airplane. Now that is unheard of in the modern campaign since I think FDR, uh, every, right. every presidential candidate has had an airplane. Maybe the beginning FDR had, had trains and probably mostly did it on trains, but he did have an airplane, I believe. And then uh, in my opinion, I have a way you can always tell who's going to win the election. You look at the right. vice presidential candidate's airplane. Ever has the best plane wins. Last time, uh, you know, Pence had a Boeing 737. Uh, I think it was like an 800. Uh, hopefully it wasn't a Max. Uh, you know, a Boeing 737 Max because uh, that was, maybe they were maybe they knew and they were trying to get rid of him. But he had a tricked out 737 and he won. Trump won. Before that, Last time Biden had a 737 and what's her name? Uh, Sarah Palin. She had a, an Embraer like 165, you know, as a total yeah. lightweight plane. So I knew right then and there that Obama was going to win. There wasn't even a question. Oh, well, that time, wait, it was um, that was the first election. So I knew from the first election Obama was going to win. I don't remember what type of plane Paul Ryan had. He probably had a Cessna 172 because that's <laughs> that's a lightweight plane and it's perfect for a lightweight like uh, like Paul Ryan. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. I, I look at, again, I look at this stuff and I get the biggest kick out of it because he, these people really aren't paying attention to what's going on around them. Uh, Joey B has no, you know, that's, that's what we refer to him on my show, Joey B. So Joey B has no chance of winning in, in, in you know, in my eyes. And it, 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 it's just amazing. They have people out there saying they will vote for Joe Biden no matter what, because they hate Trump that much. Notice that I don't say, because I love this country that much. 
And I think that, that, you know, Donald Trump is not doing the country any favors or, you know, Donald Trump isn't doing well with the economy and this and that and the other thing. That's not what they say. And, it, and it's just amazing to me that we let them, well, I don't think that we let them get away with it. But, man, I'll tell you what, you, you need to get out and vote because it can't just be uh, electing Trump. He has to be not only elected, but we also have to make sure that he has uh, uh, Senate and the House. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to be four more years of this garbage. And these people are really dangerous here. I'm not like a fan of either party. You know that. Uh, yeah. I've always been a very anti-political party, and I haven't changed my mind at all here. I think that both parties are completely corrupt. And you just have to look at the likes of, uh, of Mitney Romney to know that they're completely corrupt. But right. uh, at this point, we're past political parties. It doesn't matter who the party is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I agree with you totally. I don't, I don't think that we're not there anymore. You look at BLM, look at what's going on out there. This is, this is a total, they, the, the Democrats or I don't even know if you can call them Democrats anymore. Socialists, the communists over there on the left, um, this is a power thing for them. They have to win no matter what. They're really in a bad way. Yeah. Well, this is do or die for them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right. This is it. I mean, if they lose now, they could be out for a generation. In fact, the party could melt down. I don't know if you're, uh, I, I'm sure you've had Dr. Steve Turley on your uh, show, right? And oh, no, I've had Lamero on and he says the same thing. Yeah. So what, what, uh, what Steve says, and you should have him on your show. He's a great guest and a great all around guy, a real intellectual heavyweight is that the democratic party is actually having a revolution right now. And it's, it's, the old line liberal guard, like old Joe, dittering, nattering Nancy, all of them. And then you've got the tribal factions, AOC, Black Lives Matter, Antifa. So what's interesting is they thought they could control them and they got all the Soros money backing these factions. And now they found out that they lost control and it's costing them dearly because I don't care how much you hate the government. I mean, I'm no fan of it in many instances, but I'm of the opinion that it's a necessary evil that you got to have government. Even in tribes, there's always a chief. It's just human nature. Somebody's got to run the show because if somebody doesn't run the show, then nobody runs the show. And then you have anarchy. Yep. And it's a simple matter. Uh, somebody's got to run things. But these people, like, uh, they're proposing anarchy, and nobody on any side of the issue wants anarchy because this is what the founding fathers, particularly Alexander Hamilton, was talking about was uh, the mob rule. And we're devolving down to mob rule here. But on the other hand, the norms or the normies, as they like to call us, are starting to fight back. You notice that? Well, yeah. Why does it take us so long, Kerry? I mean, why, why is it, you know, we want to live and let live. We want to allow people to live. You know, that's the funny thing about it. The, the, the ones they say are the nasty ones, the conservatives. We're like, we don't care what you do. Just don't push us to do it. And just leave us you know, you want to have Two other husbands and five dogs and in your home. Sure, go for it. But don't tell me, don't force me to openly say it's normal because I don't think it is. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, I don't really want to be out there on the fight on the street fighting the fight here, you know, physically. I'm past that point, and I got kids. I don't want to be doing it. But uh, this is looks like what we're coming down to here, and it's really a little bit scary, isn't it? A lot of bit scary, you know? I mean, you're being nice, but it's a lot of bit scary. And the reason it is, again, I want to go right back to what I, you know, what I was trying to say before, which is that you've got these, uh, the, the Democrats who really were so full of themselves, so sure they knew what they were doing, and uh, you know, allowing the AOCs of the world and Talibs uh, to run the, for all intents and purposes, to run the uh, the party. And the reason I say that is because if you really think about what Talib has said, what she has come out and say, what AOC has come out and say, if I was the head of their party, I'd open up and say, you know what, everybody's got a right to say stupid stuff. And, you know, we don't hate the Jews in this party. 
We love Israel. Israel's always been a friend of ours. I do not know what Talib is talking about. Uh, I would have I would have walked in. Who's the other one? I would have walked into her office. I would have ripped a, ripped the uh, map down that she had on her wall and uh, you know didn't have Israel on it. And I would have said to her, "You put up another map without Israel on it, and your your next office is going to be right next to the men's room on the other side uh, of the wall with this." Yeah, hey, that, okay. that reminds me of that movie, The Distinguished Gentleman, where Eddie Murphy has the name uh, Jefferson. And the guy who was the congressman, his name was Thomas yeah. Jefferson. And so they're voting for Eddie Murphy because they don't know that the real Thomas Jefferson has died. And, you know, a name you can trust. That's what they never show Eddie Murphy's face because he's black. The real Jefferson who died is white. And all they do is put up those commercials. They even take his his campaign stuff left over from prior campaigns and use it. And I mean, it's it's really hysterical. Uh, I can see that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. How did, you, know, you know, how did you get us into this mess here? I have uh, no idea. Joe, like, what did I you did, do? Right. Um, no, but, but really, when you look at the when you look at this stuff, they are just it's almost like reality doesn't exist for them anymore. How can you look at buildings burnings, people being you know punched in the face, a group of people taking over, and and now they're trying to spin it that it's it's right wingers that oh, are yeah. doing all of this. Well, you know, and you knew that was right. If it's right wingers, my question is, how come the left wing mayors let these right wingers like De Blasio get away with it? You would think they would like yeah. nothing else than to better than to bust their heads, right? And yet, uh, oh, for some wow. reason, that's not happening. No, they're, they're scratching. They're trying to, you know, they're, they're, I think they're imploding from within. That's my personal opinion, you know, and, you know, there's, there's things they could be doing that they aren't doing because they're afraid of stepping on somebody else's uh, constituency. Like, yeah, again, go back to the people that support AOC or, or Talib for that matter, or Omar. Uh, um, you know, they might be radical people. They might not. Maybe they know what's going on. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But the leadership in the Democrat Party, I mean, God bless. Look at look at who they put out last week, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it was it was truly uh, the epitome of the old guard, right? Yeah, the nearly dead guard, led yeah. by <laughs> led by their candidate, right? I mean, yeah, is this guy alive or is he like Bernie, and they're just kind of dragging him along, but he's been dead for months. <laughs> you know, it's a weekend at Bernie Biden's. Yeah. No, I got it. I, I look at again I, I, the, the, with all the. And you've heard other people say it, and I, it just rings in my head. With all the Hollywood types that the Democrats had, the best they could do was you know was iPhone videos. I mean, seriously. Yeah, it was really yeah. tacky stuff. There, production values yeah. were horrible. Your production values and mine, honestly, Joe, <laughs> are, are far superior to theirs. Don't you think? I do. I do. And with all the with all the help and the people they have, you'd think it would just it would have simply been a slam dunk. You would have thought anyway. Yeah, and you're a guy who's working out of his garage. You have a converted studio, allowed to say that. Yep. And me, I'm in my living room. Well, it's actually it's actually a bedroom that's been converted. And we're putting out better stuff than the DNC, which has an unlimited budget. Is there something wrong with this picture? There's something wrong with those people. What do you mean something wrong with the picture? There's something wrong with those people. I mean, yeah. right. They could have done so much better. And the other thing that people uh, have been saying, even on the left, have been saying the DNC was a very dark uh, convention where the uh, Republican convention is all about, you know, how great we are. Be proud to be an American you know, do better, that kind of stuff. Even they got the message or saw the difference, which uh, I think it's exciting myself. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, they just remind me of H.L. Mencken, who once said, no one ever went broke underestimating the intelligence of the American public. And certainly a large segment of it. I got to agree with them, don't you? Ouch. (laughs) Did I leave a mark there? You think? Uh, oh yeah, I mean, I yeah, and I don't, I don't disagree with you, but, but it's you know they're not paying attention. They're just not paying attention, and it's sad. They need to pay attention. Yeah, you know, but but it's uh, people will tell me, yeah, Joe, you know, we're out trying to make a living. We're out trying to feed our family. So you're not going to be able to feed your family. You're not going to be able to make a living. Those are those are lame excuses. Yeah, don't you? Please? I mean, you can't just use that excuse that I'm trying to feed my family, and that's why I'm not doing this. Come on. <laughs> oh man, I couldn't agree with you more, man. I gotta tell I gotta tell you, man, you're right. 
You're right, man. Yeah. Hey, well, I had, you know, what I, I had think? a guy on. Last- yeah. Go ahead. I, I think you, you need to take a drug test like uh, like he yeah. told that reporter. And maybe I should take one, too. Black reporter. Are you I mean, how, I, I mean, how stereotypical a black reporter asking him if he took a coke test? Yeah. Got coke? yeah. Like a- <laughs> and if he was a drug dealer. Oh, God. Yeah. Hey, it, man, you it know was- what would happen to you or I if we did this? Oh, uh. They would have pulled me off before the show was over. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's frightening. It's frightening that they would pick this guy. It's frightening that they would think that this guy is a contender, you know? Uh, he Look, my opinion of Joe Biden, and you and I have known him for years, not personally, but known of him, is that he uh, basically was um, a buffoon, a not very bright guy. He, after all, he did he did graduate in the top ten uh, percent of his class because he graduated number seventy six out of eighty five from I think it was Syracuse Law School. So this guy is a is a real doer, you know. Don't you, hey, Gary? Don't you find it? They keep saying that everything that comes out of uh, uh, Donald Trump's mouth is a lie, a liar, a liar in chief, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, your list of what Joe Biden said that is truthful. That is factual. It would be so much shorter, wouldn't it? <laughs> Ain't that the truth, boy? Yeah. I mean, all the stuff that they said that they've they've proved uh, was a lie, flat out lie. No, it wasn't a misspeak. It wasn't a he forgot. Because if he forgot that many times, if he doesn't know where he graduated, my God, he be then he really shouldn't be yeah. uh, president. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, we're in for a lot of fun here, Joe. We're in for a lot of fun. I'm sorry you share the first name with him, but don't worry. We won't confuse you. I promise. Oh, no. <laughs> I promise we will not confuse you with him. No. So he's Joey B. I'm Joey M. Okay. That way there we don't get that. that yeah. But, but you're right though. He's, it is so irritating. Yeah. Um, it, it, that people won't speak. And his family, his family should be ashamed of themselves. Oh yeah. Putting well, him through. It's elder abuse. This. This is a clear-cut case, Joe, of elder abuse, right? Look, I agree with you. And you can see him struggling, you know, it's verbally. Struggling. Yeah, it is. It is. Completely, yep. completely pathetic. And no one should be forced to uh, to go through that. I mean, it's just terrible, uh, really. Uh, it's embarrassing, and it's it's just really a really awful, awful thing that they're doing to this guy. For what purpose? And you know he doesn't know what's going on there. He has no idea, right? <laughs> no, yeah. you're right. Absolutely none. Yeah. He's sitting there going, well, what are we doing here? How come all those people are in my living room? Yeah, would you yeah. find my uh, adult coloring book, please? I got I got uh, action figures to color here, please. <laughs> right? Oh. Yes. Well, people know we're not making fun of his disease. What, what we're really making fun of is the fact that his family members, people around, they see this, they're struggling with this with him and nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. For it's what? Sad, it's you know? pathetic. It is, it is the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in my life. And I just hope that if I ever get like that, my kids just shoot me instead, or at least give me a gun so I can do the, the job myself, you know? Oh, yeah. my son, I'm going to put five bucks in the drawer somewhere, right? Yeah. And if every, that just, just shoot me, you know, shoot me in the back of the head and get it over with. Take the 500 bucks to get out of town for a while. <laughs> I don't not like that. I do not want to be not knowing where I'm at, making stupid comments. Uh, one day he's running for Senate. The next day, you know, he's hugging his sister, thinking it's his wife. It, it's just, it's really scary. Yeah, totally scary. And uh, I don't know what can be done about it at this point, but I know that we are done. Anyways, uh, just tell us uh, realside dot com the real side dot com and you should go there just tell us uh, what awaits us yeah just head over to the real side dot com everything's there stations times um videos and and audio podcast all right <laughs> well i love it and uh, i'm a big fan myself so the link is in the show notes as we always say got a question for joe or myself email us kl at carrie lutz dot com twitter feed at carrie lutz facebook page is financial survival network and that's our website too financial survival network.com sign up for the free newsletter joe i'm sure we'll be talking again real soon as this thing progresses or regresses i think it's going to be the uh, latter and not the former 
and it's going to be entertaining. That's for sure. Yeah. No regressing. No regret. I'm not allowed. <laughs> all right. Joe, thanks. All right. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.